rousing speech. I'd like to pick up on something Gita said um, at the beginning, though. I think it's a shame, in a way, that this protest is coming the day after the president gave a speech on Iraq, uh, because I think most people in the country and in the city are concentrated on Iraq. And uh, many oppose what's happening in Iraq, I do. Uh, but I think it's a different sort of failure. It's a failure of management and um, uh, something that's cost the treasury of the country and cost the blood of our sons and daughters. And it's terribly important. But Guantanamo is different. Uh, Guantanamo is a moral failure. It goes much deeper. It's, it goes to the soul of the nation and what we stand for. And it violates everything I think this nation stands for. Let me repeat some things I, I, I'd like to say about Guantanamo. Who are these, four, these uh, 400 people at Guantanamo? It's now clear based on government documents, and I thank Stephen Hall uh, Law School for this, and also the National Journal for doing a study of it. But it's now clear that the vast majority of them were not taken into custody by the United States, and were not captured anywhere near any battlefield. They were turned over by Pakistani and Northern Alliance warlords in return for large financial bounties. As Gita said, of all the people at Guantanamo, only 8% are even accused of being connected with Al-Qaeda. Through the five years since Guantanamo has been opened, the United States has designated only 14 of all the people who have been there as people that has reason to believe were connected with terrorism. Only 10 of those people have been charged. Those 10 people, along with the other 14 so-called high-value detainees recently transferred from secret prisons, the United States has said they're going to try for war crimes. Um, the others, and if they're convicted, they'll be sentenced to terms in prison. That's all what people say. The other people who are at Guantanamo have served five-year terms, and they served those terms without charge, without hearing, and without trial, and with no end in sight. This is incredible. And you know, what is it that they want? And I need to start out, I need to start out too by uh, what the Center for Constitutional Rights and we asked for five years ago, and what these people asked for is a very simple thing, a hearing. They simply want a fair hearing to see if there's any reasonable basis to hold them there. That's all they've ever asked for. And for five years, the administration has fought tooth and nail to prevent them the most basic element of the rule of law, simply a fair hearing. Now, you know, it's incredible to me what's happened. I don't know whether you've read, but recently the commandant at Guantanamo has cracked down on the way he's treating these people. He's made it much tougher. They're not, no one's allowed to congregate together. They're all kept in isolation. They're not really ever allowed to exercise together. And the reason why he says all of these people should be treated like terrorists. If you read it, the reason he gives is not any evidence against them, because there is none, or there's very little. And they want that examined in an open hearing. The reason he gives is that they've acted, they've engaged in terrorist-like activities while at Guantanamo. What are those activities? They've engaged in such horrible things as hunger strikes and even had the gall to commit suicide. I mean, this is incredible. It's really incredible. Kafka would have had a field day with Guantanamo. The real problem about Guantanamo for our nation, of course, is that everyone around the world who hates the United States or wants others to hate the United States is already having a field day with Guantanamo. It's the chief recruiting tool for terrorism around the world. You know, uh, Guantanamo shames our nation and hurts our security every day it remains open. We said this about three years ago, but Mr. President, give these people a fair hearing and shut down this damn place. Now, I, I know I should stop there, but I, I want to read something with that sort of rousing thing, but just, uh, I want to read something. Today, uh, uh, one of our fellow lawyers, Josh Colangelo, uh, got a letter from one of his detainees down there and was printed, I believe, in the LA Times today. And I just want to uh, read a little bit of it because, you know, frankly, when I read it, it made me cry. And as Peter said, when you go down there and see these kids who are chained to the floor and have been there five years without a hearing, and it just, it wrenches if you believe in and anything that was written in the Federalist Papers and the Declaration of Independence, and you see the way we're treating these people, it just, it shames you so terribly. But this is the guy, Jamal al who has tried to commit suicide several times. 
And I'll just read the beginning and the end of what he said. Uh, he starts out by saying, I am writing from the darkness of the U.S. detention camp at Guantanamo. My hand quivers as I hold the pen. He then goes on to detail how he was captured, how he isn't connected with Al-Qaeda, would never hurt the United States, uh, and how he has just been brutally treated down there. Then he ends by saying the following. Oh, if I can open it up. My hands are so cold. But he says, I would rather die than stay here forever. And I have tried to commit suicides many times. The purpose of Guantanamo is to destroy people and I have been destroyed. I am hopeless because our voices are not heard from the depths of the detention center. If I die, please remember that there was a human being named Jama at Guantanamo whose beliefs, dignity, and humanity were abused. Please remember that there are hundreds of detainees at Guantanamo suffering the same misfortune. They have not been charged with any crimes. They have not been accused of taking any action against the United States. Show the world the letters I gave you. Let the world read them. Let the world know the agony of the detainees in, Guant in Cuba. Once again, Mr. President, close down, tear down this lawless prison.